Hi everyone, Sharon here. Today I'm going to go ahead and paint with watercolor on my canvas. The other day I put the Core Cold Press Ground by Golden on the canvas, just a thin layer. And if I do it again, I think I put it on just a bit thicker than I did on this one. But um, it still worked out okay. I lost part of my video because I ran out of storage space, so that's why my, my painting is already partially completed. Um, <laughs> I went to upload my video and could not do it because I ran out of space. So I had to delete my first hour, which was basically the portion that's already finished along with my drawing and all of that, which you really don't need to see anyway. So, um, but anyhow, painting on this, well, first I couldn't decide what I wanted to paint on it. I was thinking I'd do a landscape, but um, I thought, well, I had just done some flowers that were very similar on watercolor paper. So I thought, okay, let me try the same thing on this canvas and see what the difference is. And I did do it a little bit different, but anyway, I didn't use a reference photo or anything. I just drew some flowers and that was it. And then I started to paint them and I will say that this medium does have a very strange feel to it. You don't get the feeling that you get when you're painting on watercolor paper. There's much less absorption but um, on the plus side it really makes it easy to remove color if you make a mistake. Now there were a couple mistakes that I had made in that portion of video that I had to delete. At least I think it was on there, but I splashed some paint right onto the canvas and it sat for, I don't know, quite a while before I realized it was there. And I went ahead and took a dry paper towel and it sopped it right up and it went right back to white. Now, um, I've removed color also where I've had a little bit of bleeding because I was impatient and I wasn't waiting for the petals to dry between coloring a new one in. So um, I was able to just dab those and then repaint with no problem as well. I don't have any issues getting the, the um, bleeding, like if you want to blend watercolor together like here I'm blending colors and if I had added more water than I had there it really would have all blended together but I wanted to have some control if you use excess water it seems to sit on top of the canvas for quite a while and I found that I was using my my um, dryer after a while to kind of get rid of some of the fluid which helped but um, it's just a matter of getting used to it. I I really like it actually. It almost felt like I was painting with acrylic like watered down acrylic on a canvas. That's what it feels like. It has a rough texture and it um, just does not feel like paper. It feels like canvas. So, uh, But I, I didn't really have any trouble with it. So as you can see, I, or maybe you didn't see, but when I was doing the, the purple comb flowers, I had to go back on each one of those and add more color. I like really vibrant watercolor paintings, and this one I especially wanted vibrant. So I did go back and add pink again on all of the petals of the previous flowers and then moved on. Now that could have just been the quinacridone pink that I was using and then there was a blue violet or violet blue or something that I used also to mix in for the shadowing. On these poppies that I'm doing, I used quinacridone coral, um, and I'm trying to think what else I used. Another red, oh, cadmium red, and then I used pyrrole orange, and then later I 
kind of nixed the pyrrole orange and went ahead and used some cadmium yellow and um, that worked out. In fact on this one I don't do it until later and I was able to add yellow in after the fact and actually get it to blend because it hadn't it doesn't soak in. So um, anyway I'm just moving along here now on these poppies. And part of the editing skips because I'm letting it dry in between. So where I put that green up against the poppy, I was not putting wet against wet. That would have bled together completely. So you still have to follow the basic rules of watercolor and not let your lines touch unless you do want bleeding from one portion to the other. And I dabbed that because I realized I thought it was part of the petal I was working on, and it really isn't. It was a fold in the other petal that I was working on. So I just dried up some of the color there. I didn't remove it all because I'm going to be putting a deeper red back, but I just wanted it to um, dry so that I could go ahead and do that. And on um, these blue delphinium. I used ultramarine blue and I mixed that with a blue violet or maybe it was just violet I can't remember and I tried to give the illusion of some light I guess you could say on the flowers obviously it's not sunny and since I didn't have a reference photo I didn't want to go too deep into the into the whole um, light and shadow thing because I was afraid I'd make a mistake without a photo but I was trying to give the illusion that the light was coming in from the left which is why you can see on some of the flowers they're lighter on the left hand side and then they get deeper and now here on this poppy oh I guess I did use orange but I used it down by the quinacridone coral instead of up at the top and now I'm adding in my yellow in order to give a little more contrast in the uh, poppies I just think that that adds a little more life to them just a personal thing that I do and now we're coming up to the butterfly that I added in which is on a very strange angle so it looks like one side of his wings are too short but actually they're kind of foresh foreshortened because the wing is upright a little bit I hope that makes sense wasn't real happy with the way it turned out and I'm still using watercolor here um, with the black and then uh, adding the orange in at one point I do go in with my pen here you can see I've got a white gel pen that I used to put the white dots on I didn't feel like getting gouache out and doing layer after layer of little bitty dots so I just used the gel pen and then I ended up leaving some of the dots a little bit larger so that I could go over them with yellow watercolor and change them to yellow so they are white and yellow like a monarch butterfly would be and now I'm just fixing these edges and then what I'm gonna do here is um, I decided to go in and do a background. I'm, I'm kind of wishing I hadn't done it, but it's too late now. So, And it turned out okay. It's just that I think I preferred the white. My other painting had white. And I used the cling wrap on the sky to give it the really funny look. And then on the, the un overgrowth, on the bottom part, in the green, I used salt and sprinkled it on there so that's why you see all that strange spotted color there 
Then I removed them and this is what it looks like. And I went ahead and let it dry and put the Dorlin wax on. Um, and it went on fabulously. There was no smearing at all. It was very easy to put on. In fact, that stuff is so waterproof, it dried within minutes. And my hands were so waterproof that I couldn't even wash the stuff off my hands after I was rubbing it. But here you'll see, I'm going over the butterfly, and I noticed that there's a black smear at the bottom. I wanted to see if I could fix it. The smear was there before I applied the medium, and I did not see it until afterward. I tried to fix it and I could not get it off. I, I scrubbed it with a paper towel that was wet and also with a brush and it just didn't come out. So it's there forever. That's how fast that stuff waterproofs. And nothing, see it doesn't lift anything. And that was just seconds after applying the wax. Everybody have a great day and I'll see you soon.